What's up everyone, my name is Cody Engel, I am a staff software engineer, and I enjoy talking about the tech industry. So over the course of my career, I have had the opportunity to review probably a thousand or more pull requests, and during that time, I have made plenty of mistakes and I have learned a lot just about the way that I communicate things, the way that I actually do those code reviews. And so in this video, I wanna talk about how I achieve drama-free code reviews and if you stick around until the end, you will know exactly how you can do that yourself. Before we get into how I review code though, let's talk about how I click the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So you see, when it comes to clicking the like button, you can't just click it and you, you can't smash the like button. Like the YouTube algorithm, it doesn't, it just does not like that. What you have to do is you have to destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. That is the only way that it will pay any attention to you clicking the like button. So be sure to destroy it. And now that the like button has turned blue, let's talk about how I review code. So the first thing that I do when it comes to code reviews is I approach the review with an open mind. I really want to approach it with a growth mindset instead of a fixed one. If you have questions like what a growth mindset is or what a fixed mindset is, let me know in the comments below. Would be happy to make a video about that. Essentially what I'm doing is, unless I see something in that code review that is clearly wrong, I generally provide all of my feedback in the form of a question. Now, what means something is clearly wrong? Well, when I look at it and I know that it has some obvious unintended side effects, if I know that the code isn't actually doing what it says it's doing. In those situations, I'm like, all right, this code clearly is not correct. And what I will do is I'll, I'll call that out in the comment, but I also will usually send a direct message to the author of that code to let them know, hey, this doesn't look quite right. Can we just chat about this? What that actually does is it opens up a easier line of communication instead of just going back and forth through comments. You're able to talk about stuff pretty quickly. If you realize, hey, this might need some FaceTime to talk about, you can easily make a call through Slack. So that is what I usually do when something is clearly wrong. But I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's talk about what I actually do when I first open up any new pull request. And that is I read the description. So this might sound really obvious, but I've noticed at times in my career when I'm especially busy, I might just open the pull request and jump straight to looking at the code, which isn't a good idea because if you're just looking at the code and you're not actually reading the description, well, you don't actually know what is going on. They may already answer a lot of your questions in that description. So always read the description. Sometimes it can take being a bit more mindful about how you're doing these code reviews, but that's one thing to keep in mind. After I've checked the description and I've read through it, I understand what the changes are, I skim through the changes. So generally when I'm doing this, I like to review the unit tests first. Unit tests, they give you an idea of how the code is actually intended to work. If the unit tests are kind of confusing, it makes the rest of the code review confusing. And so if you're curious about how to write good and effective unit tests, let me know. Always happy to make more videos. The next thing that I do while I'm skimming through the changes is I try to see if anything jumps out to me, if anything sticks out right away. If something does, that is usually where I will start the review process and will start leaving some comments and, and some feedback. In general though, while I am skimming through the changes, if nothing sticks out to me right away, usually probably about 80% of the time, this is going to mean that the pull request is going to be approved. Without much dialogue, I'm just gonna say, hey, LGTM with the uh, ship it uh, squirrel emoji and it's, it's gonna be done. But keep in mind, this is just my first pass through. I always do a second pass on all of my code reviews, but skimming through, it gives me just a general idea of what I'm getting myself into. So when the changes that I'm looking at are straightforward, I usually will do that review on GitHub or GitLab, just depending on what the company is using. So these are usually smaller changes uh, that's not the exclusive way of knowing it though. Um, small changes can be really complex. Likewise, really big changes can actually be pretty simple to, to review if it's just a big refactor job. One area that I focus on are best practices. And so this is generally looking at when I'm reading through the code, do the names make sense? 
So in terms of names, like what are those? I'm talking about class names, I'm talking about variable names, function names. Also, are we using the language features appropriately? And so for myself, I am a Android engineer and I write a lot of code in Kotlin. And so when I'm looking at the code, I'm reading like, is this Kotlin Kotlin code or is this Kotlin code written like Java? And if it's Kotlin code written like Java, I will generally try to ask questions about, well, like, why are we doing it this way as opposed to this way? And the alternative solution I will offer up will be a Kotlin-y Kotlin way instead of the Java Kotlin way. Then I also look to make sure that are these unit tests that are, are being written, are they doing what they say they are doing? Another thing with unit tests and, and tests in general is when you're using mocks for your tests, are those mocks actually being used appropriately. I've run into situations where the class under test is being mocked, for example. And when that happens, that to me is not really a questionable thing. It's just more of, hey, just a heads up, you are mocking the class under test. We should not do that. Let me know if you need any help. In general though, these are all suggestions outside of uh, someone mocking the test subject. So if I can't convince the author that they should make these changes, that is my fault. It's not theirs. So that is one thing that I always keep in mind when I'm doing these code reviews. I'm trying to convince them to make some changes if any changes are actually needed. Another area of code reviews is actually asking questions about the business requirements when you are confused. And this can happen if you are on a larger team where you aren't able to fully understand all of the requirements that are going into something. Maybe the engineer talked to the product manager on the side. And so when I'm confused about what I'm seeing in the code, what I do is I just ask a question. That's all I do. I don't try to offer up solutions. I don't have any sort of ulterior motive. I just ask a question and that'll either mean that the engineer that wrote the code, they can answer it. Or if they can't answer the question, it's a signal to them that, hey, maybe I should be able to answer that question. And then they can go back and do a little bit of homework. And then the last thing with any sort of code review, is I will look for code that I like. It's just a nice way to let the code author know that they're doing something really well. And so if I see a piece of code where I'm like, hey, I, I learned something new, or hey, that's like really clever, I just call that out. It's not a question, it's not something that needs to change, it's just a nice thumbs up, you're doing a good job, keep doing that. All right, so that is what I do with every single code review, but there are situations where I'm skimming through the changes and I'm realizing, hey, this is a pretty complicated change. I can't do that just through GitHub. So in those situations, I will pull down the code, I will open it up within my IDE, which is Android Studio in this case. And then again, I do the same exact review that I would have done through GitHub or GitLab, but I do a bit more. What that means is I will manually test the changes. I will make sure that it does exactly what it says it does. Again, because looking through the code, I can't really follow it too well and that signals to me that maybe the changes aren't going to do what they say they're going to do. So I test them out, I make sure that it works. If it doesn't work, I can set some breakpoints, I can figure out, well, what bug am I encountering, and I can use that as a piece of feedback during the code review. Then even if there aren't bugs, if it's especially complex, I will sometimes just set breakpoints at the very top level of the change. And so when I say top level, I mean, if this is a Android application, the top level is generally like the activity, the fragment, the view, the thing that the user is actually like clicking on and interacting with. So I'll set a breakpoint up there, and then I will set breakpoints at the view model, then at the use case, and then finally down at the repository level. And I will step through each layer and figure out like what is going on, how does this all function. As I'm stepping through the code, I also look to make sure that the code follows a pretty consistent path. So unidirectional data flows, those are pretty easy to follow. Uh, sometimes you'll just get like spaghetti code where things just call here and then it calls here, it calls over there and then it calls here. And it's just really difficult to follow and understand how does that piece of code work. In the cases where it feels like more spaghetti code, again, I will generally ask questions like, hey, why is this interaction this way? Or like, can you explain this interaction a bit more to me? At the end of the code review, so whether it was straightforward or not straightforward, the last thing that I will do is I will decide what is the outcome of the review. In general, I will approve around 70% of the code that I review. This happens if I don't have to suggest anything. You know, in those situations, it's a pretty easy review. Also, if all I have are suggestions, and so 
the, the code works, it works perfectly fine. I don't see any like major issues. Then I, I approve it. I mention, hey, I had some suggestions. If you care to incorporate those and want to make those changes, feel free, just ping me on Slack. I will review the code again really quick but it's just a suggestion. Don't feel the urge that you have to actually make those changes. Uh, another way that I will close out pull requests are just by leaving a comment, so I'm not approving it. I'm also not requesting any changes. This is where about, I would say, 20% of my reviews fall. Usually, these are ones where I don't feel comfortable approving it outright. However, I also don't feel comfortable requesting changes. It's just something where I looked through the code, I left some questions, I left some feedback, but in general, if there are going to be two other people that are looking at the code, they want to approve it, I'm not going to hold back the code review. For the remaining 10% of code reviews that I do, I will request changes. This means I am blocking the pull request from being merged in. This is usually when I have seen something that is legitimately wrong with the code. They should not merge in those changes. If they do, I will probably get woken up at 3 a.m. in the morning one day because the app is crashing or something. I am generally confident that changes must be made to this code. Again, generally confident. There are times where I will request changes. I will think, yes, this code needs to change. Then I talk to the developer that wrote the code and I'm like, oh wait, Nope, never mind. I was wrong. Go ahead and merge it in. I think one of the most important things about anyone doing code reviews is you have to leave your ego at the door. So sometimes you will be right. Sometimes changes do have to be made. Other times though, you're going to be wrong. And so just make sure that you are kind of approaching it with an open mind. That's it. That is the video. So thank you so much for watching. I make videos like this every single week. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Click the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And other than that, I just want to call out, we also have a Discord group. It is growing every single week. I'm trying to get it to be more engaging for everyone. So there is an invite link to the Discord group in the description below if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.